Well, it's time for another mythology presentation, and this time I get to make a video on Chinese dragons. Chinese dragons are interesting to say the least. I mean, for one, they can fly, but have no wings, which I find a bit confusing. That's kind of like a Pokemon rule right there. But to start off, where do these odd mythological serpents originate from in China? The dragons of China, of which there are about nine different types, I'll get into later, don't really have a clear origin. The hypothesis of one Win Yi Duo is that the dragon is the symbol or representation of a series of tribes coming together, each tribe having its own unique totem pole, and each totem pole being a different animal. When these tribes united to form one nation, they melded their totem poles together to get what is called the Long or Long Dragon of China. But why would mixing a whole bunch of random animals together make a dragon, I hear you ask? Well, the Chinese long dragon, or long dragon as it is also called, is described as having the body of a snake, the eyes of a rabbit, the belly of a frog, and the antlers of a deer. So naturally, this hypothesis would make sense at first glance. But it doesn't explain the appearance of dragons in Chinese mythology as early as 4500 BC, long before the first Chinese nation, or dynasty as it's called, was founded which was in 1250 BC in the form of the Shang Dynasty, which is the earliest dynasty that we have a written record of. So from what I've been researching, no one really knows where or how Chinese dragons, or long dragons, originated from, which I find incredibly fascinating and mysterious. So, now that I've talked about the origins, or lack thereof, Let's talk about something like what these cool Chinese serpents could do with their powers and what they did control with said powers. Chinese dragons are associated heavily with the weather, and the sea in ancient times had its own dragon king, which directed the weather over that sea. There were four dragon kings, one in the East China Sea, one in the South China Sea, one in the Western China Sea, which was Lake Qing... Pai, and one in the Northern Sea, or Lake Baikal. Chinese villages, especially those close to... Where was I? Chinese villages, especially those close to a body of water, would erect a temple to the local dragon king, and in times of drought or flooding, it was customary for local officials to lead the community in offering sacrifices and conducting other religious rites to appease the dragon from the temple and ask for either rain or the cessation thereof. There are still many temples to dragons in China today and even some people who still worship dragons in China today. <sighs> Ugh. Before I get into the nine different types of dragons in China, I want to cover a really interesting Chinese legend that involves a dragon, or rather the birth of a dragon, which is called the Dragon's Pearl, which is an ancient Chinese legend. Long ago, near the river Min, spelled M-I-N, there lived a woman and her son. There were... They were good people, but very poor. Every day, the boy would hike into the countryside to cut grass. This he would gather and sell to his fellow villagers for use as fuel and fodder. With the son's small earning, the boy and his mother managed to survive. But one year, a terrible drought struck the land. But the boy continued to go out and cut grass, gathering what he could and selling it to his fellow villagers. As the drought killed off more and more grass, the boy began to earn less and less. After a while, his mother became ill from hunger. But one day, the boy came across the luscious, luscious patch of bright green grass he had ever seen. Amazed, the boy cut all the grass and qu quickly rushed to sell it in the village. The boy earned more money in this one trip than he had ever earned before, and with it he rushed home and fed his mother a hearty meal. 
The next day, the boy returns to the same spot, hoping to find more lush green grass to cut. Grass, not grass, English. To cut and sell. To the boy's amazement, not only did he find what he sought, but it was the very same patch of lush green grass that he had cut the day before. Once more, bleh. once more he cut the grass, and once more he sold it and fed himself and his mother a fine meal. For five days the boy cut the same grass and earned vast amounts of money, until, on the sixth day, he awoke and had an idea. Since the magic grass was so far away from his home, and he tired of walking there every day, he decided he would return once more, but this time he would dig up the magic grass by the roots and plant it beside their home. As the boy dug, he discovered under the magic grass a pearl tinged in pink. The boy pocketed the pearl and finished his work. That night, he showed the pearl to his mother, who desired to keep the pearl. She placed the pearl in a rice jar, and the boy went outside to plant his magic grass. But when the boy awoke and ran outside to see his grass, it was withered and dying. Oh, I am a fool, the boy cried. If only I had not been so lazy. Then he remembered the pearl and ran to the rice jar. The rice jar had been nearly empty, but this morning sat overflowing with rice, and atop the mountain of rice sat the pearl. The boy and his mother realized it was not the grass that was magic, but the pearl that rested underneath it. The boy and his mother soon had no worries as they used the pearl to get what they needed. If they were low on food, they would put the pearl with the food. And if they needed oil, they would put the pearl in the oil. If they needed money, they would put the pearl in the money box. And you'd see where it's going. The boy and his mother shared their fortunes with the village, and only two men, two men in the village were suspicious of them. One day, these two selfish and greedy men approached the house of the boy and his mother and bullied them, demanding to know their secret to their fortune. The mother explained how there was no secret and that they had been blessed with a magic pearl. When the two men threatened to take the pearl, the boy snatched it up and put it in his mouth. That was a mistake. Enraged, the two men shook the boy, demanding the pearl, and the boy who held the pearl in his mouth swallowed it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. The boy instantly felt a great thirst overtake him. In pain and thirsty, the boy begged for water. The mother continued to pour him water until he drank all the water in the house. The boy ran outside and drank from the village well until he had drunk it dry. The boy then ran to the river Min, again that's, pronounced, that's spelled M-I-N, and proceeded to drink it dry as well. As the boy finished drinking the river, there was a loud crash of thunder Wind roared and lightning flashed as rain poured from the heavens. The village celebrated briefly the fact that the drought was finally over. But the sight in front of them stun soon stunned them to silence. The boy began to grow and scales emerged from his skin and horns from his skull until the boy had become a dragon. The rain kept pouring, and the river began to overflow. The mother called, Come back, my child. The boy could not help but look back at his mother, knowing he would not change back. The mother, too, soon understood this, and departed, saying to her son, Farewell, my son. Guard the river well. From then on, the dragon guarded the river and the magic pearl in the river men. That is a bit condensed because it was a really long story. Uh, now then, on to the fun part. With the legend of the dragon's pearl finished, I'm going to talk about the nine different types of dragons. The first of the nine different types of dragons up on the list is the Chinese horned dragon. 
The Horned Dragon is both the wisest of all dragons and the symbol of imperial power. It is usually depicted as being red with a golden underbelly, which is naturally why I can only find one that's gold with a white underbelly. Thank you, Google Images. While having a beard and fringe. Not sure what a beard and fringe is. Though the horned dragon can fly, it has no wings, so it uses its magic to fly instead. The horned dragon can also produce rain and is apparently completely deaf. So, good luck shouting up to it. That's enough rain, sir. Next on the list is... Let me change pages here. The Chinese winged dragon. The winged dragons are the oldest of all eastern dragons, and also the only type of eastern dragon with wings. Other than that, there isn't much information on these dragons, sadly. Because for some reason the website I'm using to talk about these doesn't have much information on them. Third on the list is the Celestial Dragon. The Celestial Dragon lives in the sky and guards the gods to keep them from falling out of the clouds. That's all the information this site has on them. The fourth dragon is the Spiritual Dragon. The Spiritual Dragon... ...generates wind and rain for the benefit of mankind, which is kind of redundant because the Horned Dragon in Chinese mythology also makes rain. So, two men, one job, I don't really know. The fifth is the Dragon of Hidden Treasures, which, as the name suggests, is a dragon that guards hidden treasures or concealed wealth. Sadly, I couldn't find an image of this particular dragon to include in this video, mostly because Google Images didn't have any. The sixth type of dragon is the Coiling Dragon, which not only could I not find an image of to use in the video, but the website I'm using that lists off these dragons only provides the information they live in the water. That's it. I'll put the screenshot on to prove it on screen right now. There you go. That's it. I'm guessing the person typing that particular article couldn't be asked. Fish live in the water, that doesn't tell me anything about them, but thanks, mate. Next one is the Yellow Dragon. Sorry, I thought I had a picture of that one, I don't apparently. The Yellow Dragon is. Give me a minute, I lost my place. The Yellow Dragon is next on the list, and it is the dragon that once emerged from water and presented the legendary Emperor Fu Shi with the elements of writing. And finally, the Dragon King, or the King of all the Dragons. This is actually four different dragons, because each of the four seas had its own Dragon King, but only two of them are mentioned by name. At least I could only f manage to find two mentioned by name. Well, the first is Yi Yi, I.E. Ili, something like that, capital I, lowercase i, who is homeless and lives in the ocean. Sure, surely it can't be homeless then because he lives somewhere. And Chiao, spelled C-H-I-A-O, who mostly inhabits marshes, but keeps some dens in the mountains. And with that, that is about it for my presentation. However, these Chinese dragons were really interesting to read about. The only parts that confuse me is the fact that it specifically says there are nine types of Chinese dragons and then has next to no information on them. And I was unable to find much more than the website I was using already when I tried to Google more about them. So, thank you internet for nothing. That aside, that small, albeit potentially majorly grade altering complaint aside. At least this presentation is longer than the other ones I've made because at time of writing this p closing paragraph I'm at six pages.